Shovela, Kale Amuhela, more Raising Babies 101, your guide to parenting. Libito Laka ke Carol Ofori. Today in more studio, Retla Bribua, Lady Experts Sarona, studio audience Yarona, Lilona, the viewers go high, can get in touch with us on all social media platforms. Sesela Telang, Ribua Gahu Anye Sangwana, Culture Beliefs on the Bati Fongana, Raising Multiples, and Dishy Daddy MT shares his views on parenting with us. straight into it extended breastfeeding is there a cutoff age what is it and most importantly how do you handle it how does a baby handle it joining me is sister dimakato mutawung and jennifer papers from famsa and of course my lovely studio audience so it's a really really hot topic you did mention uh, jennifer that you love talking about <laughs> breastfeeding tell me why you love talking about <clears throat> breastfeeding no most definitely you know um before i became a mom uh, you know, you hear all kinds of stories and people just sort of demotivate you. Um, but for some reason, my um, my little in instincts just kicked in after I gave birth and my son latched on like immediately. It was like such a miracle. And I just loved it. There's so many benefits to that. I mean, I lost like over 20 kilos by just bre breastfeeding, hey? Yeah. So there's so many benefits that comes with that. And also the intelligence of the child, I mean, and the bonding that you do with him, it's like so amazing. So, so amazing. most definitely. So sister, from, from, from your experience, what are the benefits? Jennifer did touch on it, but what are some of the benefits of breastfeeding? Okay, the benefits of breastfeeding, remember when our kids grow, they need to learn how to trust. So firstly, it starts from learning how to trust, holding your baby, looking into the eyes, bonding. Mm. The baby learns how to trust. Exactly. And then again, the rest are for the mother, that they don't have to go shopping to buy milk. It's already there. It's already there. But it's then warm. I have to ask you, with all of those elements there, uh -huh. uh, when do you stop breastfeeding? And, uh, you know, when would you suggest that one should stop breastfeeding? Okay. Is there a cutoff? Um, in a medical perspective, we want the mother to to breastfeed up to six months. Yeah, after six months, the mother can decide whether they want to stop or continue. Because the reason we want the mother to breastfeed from birth up to six months, mm -hmm. it's because the baby's digestive system, mm -hmm. it's not yet developed to accommodate solid food and other food that are processed. Mm -hmm. So the milk, it's, it's designed to be able to be digested in the system of the baby up until six months. That's if when someone, we introduce the solids. If someone is breastfeeding uh, a two-year-old, for example... It's that the baby's immunity will be stronger because he's still getting it from the mother through the milk. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, Jennifer, I have to bring you in here from a social worker point of view. Uh, I, I personally find it strange when a child's like four or five years old mm -hmm. and they want to walk up to a mother and literally open the top to have breast mm -hmm. milk. Uh, from a social worker point of view, what is your view on that? Sometimes it's a mom who, you know, that thing of wanting to keep the child um, close to her. Um, but, you know, the the, then she's also hampering the independence of the child. I mean, a child's breastfeeding four years old and six years old when they're at school, are you going to go to school and like be like, OK, it's breastfeeding time? No, yeah. you know? So um, we have to let go at some point. Um, doctors do recommend up until the age of two years old as well, mm -hmm. you know, um, like I said, for the immune system and for the intelligence as well. Although six months, it's it's also a good time before the child actually goes on solids. Yes. Let's get a question from our studio audience. May I ask you a question? Yes. 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 Is it true? Oh. So basically, whatever your body is going through, uh, flu, whatever the case may be, can you pass whatever on? No, to... looking at the, 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 the breast itself and the formation of the milk, it has nothing to do with the production of the milk and the health of the mother. However, when the mother is having those infections, you know, um, uh, microbiotics, they travel a lot. It might be from the toilet, then you hold your breast and then mm. you give the child, then the baby might have gotten the diarrhea from that, but not from the milk specifically. Mm. So it is wise that the mother 
if they're having something of that sort, any illness, they get treated and then make sure that they, they prioritize on their hygiene. And also, Carol, mm. just to, um, for something very important, even if you're HIV positive and you're breastfeeding, you shouldn't be concerned. As long as you're taking your medication and you're HIV positive, you can still breastfeed your baby because there's something in your milk called antibodies that actually fight against anything that might be passed on to the mums. How long does a mother have milk? Um, for as long as the baby's still sucking on the, the breast. So if you're 36? And your baby's still <laughs> sucking. <laughs> your baby's still sucking. So even a 12-year-old, it's, it's possible. Suck. So our final thought from uh, my experts here in studio, what is your thoughts on extended breastfeeding? Yes or no? Um, on my side, yes, until the age of two, but two please, is a not over that age because then your child is talking and walking and we don't want, you know, creepy things. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Rufilo, yes or no? Looking at my side and having to think of being a career and always busy, I, it would be a no for me. I think I would go for the six months and then it's a cut off. Thank you so much, ladies, for weighing in on extended breastfeeding. We appreciate your insight. Let's continue the conversation on social media. Now it's time for You Decide. In the African culture, umoya, umubi or ipati affects infants. There are so many cultural rules and myths when it comes to infants. One of them is a new baby can only come out or meet people after they are three months. Well, we got to ask some parents on the streets what their take was on the topic and this is what they had to say. At the moment, and then if family is on after 10 days, my say we see the inner one. From there, after three months, you go in Rena Harry Baby Tohan, the Berekisha Moti Onyo, and then that one again come come ring, Mom said, until Moana Abanali. Three months after three months, you the food. Hackable, the we are joined by Gogo Dineo Nlanzi in studio. Dumela Gogo. Dumela Likai. Dumela Likai. Dumela Likai. Dumela Likai. Dumela Likai. Three months is the marker for most things. Kupara mm. Kaluseta traditions. Kangwa no munyani between zero to three. Hey, and Horu Gogo Dineo, then I'm expected to be Nkhunu myself <laughs> in the regard that I carry, you know, decades of experiences from bathing my own children to bathing grandchildren, but so culture is very complex because no culture is the same. You know, each culture is different. So when we're looking at cultural belief systems as, as uh, Africans, we always understand that human beings are not only just made of the physical body that we interact with. Rituals begin at, at conception. When the two of you are deciding that you're going to conceive and mm. have a baby come forth, there are processes that need to be done to prepare. So some of those principles of don't do anything for that period is to allow for your physical body oh, to recover. So just to clarify, the three months it's when ruling resides in Nix mm. is part of uh, the healing process. Mm. It's not only for you, but I adjust outside their mother's womb because they were protected and they were shielded. So has to adjust to the new environments that they're in. Because 
immune system strengthen the immune system ya gagwe ka re go ila ga go to make sure ngwana immune system ya gagwe is strong enough for a ka gona go 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 emelana le memoya e mebe memoya e mebe le party ga ditshwane a o tlhalosa ga me so memoya e mebe it's a memoya e toxic in the environment so kiri gems it's a kiri gems eh ya kiri gems wa bona batho ba ba fapa fapa ni mara le memoya ya batho ka re batho bana le memoya ke re ke tlhalosetse ga ke tlhalotsa gore ke nama le memoya so memoya ya batho ga itshwane so ngwana ga tsa mae o o o o o o batho o hongela imimoya etize o ka tshola gore wena o feletswe go tlhokofalla so meaning gore moya ga go sa imela ka re o sa o itse mo leng go teng so ngwana o tlong ka moya o wa motho and then o dule gore a ga ro ba le busugo ngwana o ba ba bang ba tla re ke colleague but it it it's all interconnected and ke le ke a utla gore bana le bone ba bona ba bona batho like ba bona bodimo ba bona ha ngwana ntse bua le one fellow ka nagana gore ngwana it's an imaginary friend o ba le modimo le badimo ba ga eh ha rutle for our studio audience ba na le pozo do you want to weigh in on the conversation our studio audience yes le ga ma re teng re re te a mama since now rena le mostly teenage pregnancy yeng ata so and then we tend to have our own beliefs compared to tabata mm. to nabo so whereby ma motla ba blella sister so gore no you have to go rudule motlo for 3 months and so forth like ntse batho and then ena ba tla ka tsela ga ga gore no phela that was your era and all that so batho ba jwalo le le ka ba advise jo amba tswa jo i would advise gore ge le ngwana ga go wa mathom ila as long as you can car it's very important lo ena tsontso adjust to motherhood so gantsi e bagolo ba rona ke gore le bona ga ba re tlhalosetse meetlo ya rona le gore how is that going to benefit nna ke le memotsadi is going to benefit ngwana o ke motsetseng exactly and i think it's very important ga be ke gore today's times but they don't just take gore o gono are gona le google ya no motsana ko internet o wa check a gore what does the internet say ngwana ga sa robale wa botsisa ko ko internet gore what is the problem and then o gono tsa ke o scample la ka internet te ya gagwe ke tsela re yetsa montlonye a ke ke intergenerational gaps we need to see each other i think le bana ba sekar ko bonkgono ke ntho tsa gale because o tlo kulela ke ngwana ngwana go sa itsiwe gore ke eng ga ntengwana ga yena ga utlwela nkgono le bonkgono ba ka se re no ke ntho tsa setsha is to sit down and have proper conversations and i think as we wrap it up what advice would you give bonkgono ba mshebileng gone ano le bana ba shebileng proper conversations are important Thank you very much Gogo Dinewa. I think you've really painted a nice picture of how we must look at culture and today's times and find a middle ground in order to raise our children. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. So, it's really up to you to decide and we'd like to hear from you on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. What do you think about different cultural beliefs? We'll be right back. Stay with us. When we come back easy peasy on carrying baby on your back the big question of the day and dishy funny daddy mt Rally amogela gape mo raising babies 101 it's now time for that easy peasy demo for parents <laughs> In studio I am joined by Sister Dimakato who will be showing us how to carry a baby on your back the correct way. Now in Sizulu the term is called ukuteta or khopepa ngwana ka sotho. It's not the fancy way of doing it but for many years it has worked and till today most mothers prefer doing it old school style. So Sister Dimakato is there a specific age that you can start khopepa ngwana? No there's not a specific age really but you must when you do it you must take into consideration the development of the baby you cannot be opening the legs and pulling it too tight because the bones are still fragile there's also a myth or some people believe for how pepa ngwana too young he the child will end up having like uh, bow legs or matinyana atulenyana Like you said it's a myth it's that a myth. is called recat and it's called by a lack of supplement of a calcium supplement in the baby and it has nothing to do with baby having recats from hopepiwa Oh I see mm -hmm. okay so sister nagetlo za ma hopepa ngwana o aka o this is how I do it go ga o tlamplela gore if I'm doing it the right or wrong way let's assume this little one is about a year and a half what I'll do is normally take the baby like this mm -hmm. carefully place the baby on my back Yes. Arch my back like this. 
then I will take my blanket. But be very careful. I don't want to get all the time. Yeah, over the balance. Eh, the balance. Get us in the bar. Eh, get us in. Okay. And then I make sure matzoha ahare atuile. Because my little boy orato bereki sa matzoha ahare hakimu pepil. Then I'll just go in, close there, close there, put that in there, and then kitsa e kafutase. And then I make sure matoa kake akamuhar. And then I do this. Ebeki reyana. Ebeki puta la kamuhar. Then kia checka fella hor matoa aswile and mukokoto wa kake is covered. It's covered. Is that, that right? Is, that is the Ubatou. right and a traditional way to do it. Hey, <laughs> we have a question <laughs> from our audience. Make a wana on shaba karhe musadi o karwa zen. Okay, and what do you think about this? Good? It's co it's good, it's comfy. Comfy. Yes. Ah! Yay! <laughs> Yay for me! Okay, so that is it. Is there any other tips or advice you want to give moms about putting baby on the back? Because it can be, if you don't know how to do it properly, Okay, the tips uh, I would give to the mothers is that make sure that it's not too tight because the baby also needs room to breathe. Mm. And then if, let's say, it's the early stages, mm. Anne, make sure that your baby is comfortable. If you, you hear the baby starts crying, you just pull, hey, it, hey, pull hey. it down a bit and then start over again so that the baby gets used to it. Okay. And then again, if yeah, your baby is suffering from conditions like colic, oh. it's very good in helping to relieve the colic because remember, the air is filled in the abdomen. And then once there's a compression, you're actually helping the baby to burp. Oh, wow. And so then, Hupepa Mwana has some benefits yeah, as well. Benefits. I know yes, about Chusa Horobala. Thank you so much, Sister Dimakato, for showing us Horopepa Mwana Joan. Thank you, Brian. So, uhupule hore, hupepa wana has some benefits. Firstly, it was a colleague and it was a hore arobale. If you enjoyed that, give us your comments and your feedback. Go Facebook, Instagram, as well as Twitter. Now, it's time for our baby shower giveaway. <laughs> Okay, viewers, as we all know, parenting can be very, very costly. To make life a little easier for you, our baby shower segment is to shower you with gifts. This week, we have a baby hamper to give away. All you need to do is answer yes or no to one simple question correctly. Does carrying a baby on your back help with colic? To enter this competition, answer yes or no on our social media platforms. Answer correctly and one lucky viewer will randomly be selected to win a baby hamper voucher valued at 1,000 Rand. The winner will be announced on our social media. Best of luck. After the break, we meet Rufila Mukuta, a mother to multiples, and she gets to ask our experts the big question. Stay with us. Welcome back to Raising Babies 101. If you've just joined us, you are just in time for the big question. Now, it's challenging enough giving birth to and raising one baby. Imagine there are two or three or more. The big question for today is raising multiples. How do I prepare? My experts in studio are Valine Nodia from Samba, Jennifer Papers from FAMSA. We also have Rufilo Mokota, our case study for today. And this is what we got to experience with her the other day. Hi, raising babies. I'm Alami. I'm Filo. I'm Kota. Nishala e Fosleras. I'm a full-time mother. The Nabanto Naba o four. O Kala una fourteen. O Landela yo una eight. And then go to Laba about two. Baso yenza one. Baso ten a one. Nabanto ane they have different needs available ane ne because um, it varies from age to age. Ne? The older one is a teenager and already ufuna ukuthi ngimnake ukhulume naye and ngibe there for him as a friend and as a mother. And then the other one is about eight years, she's eight years old. Naye, she's very demanding. And the fact that somebody came, sort of like took over from Yena being the last one, she was the last one according to Yen, and then these two came, so she had to adjust to having, from being the baby in the family. So she had to give way, but okay, now the attention is no more on me alone, but also on these two, 
and it was a very challenging time for her. It even affected her schoolwork because I even had to see, go see her teacher. It affected her school. But as soon as I explained that there's twins in the picture, then they started understanding and the teacher gave her more attention as well. Okay, things started changing. Mangtola Laba, Mwaba Nabo, Bad more attention, more focus, more energy. Yeah, more of my time. Yeah, so what color of one see my girl from Lapo because man just say, say, Baba Nina Bantuana, and they all are from different ages. Raising babies, may you please give me advice on what to do regarding uh, mothering all these four children and distributing my love and my time equally to all of them without uh, suffering from burnout, exhaustion, and losing who I am in the process. Wow, that seems like a lot of work, Rifilwe. Four children and two of them twins. So I've got my experts here in the studio. Um, Rifilwe, after watching the video back yourself and seeing that you are actually quite swamped when it comes to this, how does that make you feel? Well, uh, I feel like it's, it's, a, it's a lot of work. Mm. Yeah, and I, I feel that I need a lot of uh, help regarding the twins especially, because the older ones, they can take off themselves much better, but the twins, uh, I feel like I need a way of, of structuring my day around them as well. This is where I bring both of you experts in. I think I'll start with you, Valine. Tell me, what advice do you have for parents who are raising multiples and specifically Rifilwe? Yeah, well, I think what worked for us was um, just getting them into a routine and uh, structuring the day around, especially like nap times, meal times. Mm -hmm. When they, my twins were about two months old, we started following a book, Gina Ford, um, Contented House with Twins. Mm. And um, yeah, that um, really helped us just to, to get that day and split the day and night so that they also know when it's night time. Like, I don't know how they sleep, but that's a very important thing to get the night times right and so that they understand when it's night time. Like, so tell us, Rufila, how do they sleep? <laughs> the one doesn't sleep. The boy sleeps. You can just put him in his cot, give him a bottle, and he will sleep on his own. But the girl, sometimes she wants to be rocked. Um, she plays around, she cries a lot, and during the night she wakes up, I don't know how many times. Oh, true diva. <laughs> <laughs> true diva. Jennifer, you want to add to some advice as well? Uh, most definitely. I think being a mom, we always want to do everything ourselves and we want to be perfect. And, you know, you just want to give a lot of your love as well. And that's okay. But you also need to ask for help. Um, asking for help doesn't mean that you, you know, less of a mom or you're weaker than any other mom. Um, it just means that you also get to take care of yourself so you can be able to take care of, of the twins. So just having a support structure, um, people can help you, whether it's a friend or a family member, will definitely help just so you can have that space for yourself, whether it is that you're going to go and do your nails, take a nap or go, you know, mm. do shopping at the mall and then come back refreshed and you're able to give more of your love and attention to your kids. What are some of the challenges that parents to multiples face? Well, of course, um, I think that mostly housework um, is something that we, we stress about a lot. Um, and then the cooking as well that you have every day. But then I think if you cook like for, you know, more than one day, if you cook like for three days in a week or so and then freeze your food and then, you know, um, just warm it up every day, you don't have to stress about having to come home and cook as well. So, you know, just, you know, like um, Valine said, structuring your day in a way so that you don't go crazy as well. That's true. What are some of the challenges you have experienced, Rufilo, from being a mom? <sighs> Multiples. Okay, first waking up in the morning. Mm. Sometimes they wake me up when I'm still tired. Yeah. I still want to sleep. I haven't slept at night. So from when the, the day begins, that's when it starts. But they usually sleep um, around 8 and 9 in the morning. Mm -hmm. But they're so hyperactive during the day. And they, they like when I sit with them and play with them. Mm. And when it's time for me to do the house chores, it's, it's, it's quite difficult because sometimes I'm tired and sometimes they're chasing after me, they're busy pulling me and they want my attention as well. Mm. So it's quite hectic when it comes to having to cook at the same time. They're Do you next have to help? Me. Do you have help? 
my older daughter sometimes help and their father because he comes late at night yeah. he helps out okay at night yes. okay so Valine, what would you say i mean so there, there, there are moms watching now um, only with one child and not multiples mm -hmm. um what would you explain the experience to be for for them i think it's just difficult to split your attention it's with just between, i mean never mind trying to clean or anything else i mean even now the age that they are i won't even try and do anything else while they're awake. Yeah. So, but just with the two of them, just giving them both attention because they want to be picked up, they want to have the attention. And yeah. They always have to compete. They're always competing sure. for the attention. I, I, I'm actually quite curious. How does feeding times work? <laughs> <laughs> because they both want to eat. They might not eat at the same exact time. But Rafila, what is? How does feeding times work for you? Okay. At first, um, I used to feed them. I used to dish up for them in individual dishes. Mm. Because uh, I needed to measure how much they eat each one. Okay. And then I'd start with the one, but the other one would cry. So I'd have to put them there on their chairs and try and feed this one and take a spoon and feed that one and feed this <laughs> one. Multitasking. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and both of them are hungry and the other one's crying. I'm being slow. So I, somewhere as they grew up, I started dishing up on one bowl so that I try and at least... Uh, make it faster for them. Yeah. Yeah, but it's quite hectic. Feeding time is hectic because right now they're walking and they're running away and mm -hmm. I have to chase them and bring them back. And <laughs> It's crazy. <laughs> it's a full-time job being a mom. It's, it really most, is. Most I have to ask you, uh, Jennifer, what, what, what would you say is, is, is key to, to being a mom to multiples and being able to give all your love but still have time to get your nails done, get your hair done and just look after you as well? I think maybe for the film where what's important is that she knows um, the twins individually, um, their personalities, who needs more attention than, than the other, you know, because as much as they're twins, definitely they're individuals as well. And sort of then split your time according to who needs more attention and rather than trying to give both attention at the same time. And also just like keep them active or occupied. Um, I find that um, even with my son, when I'm, he doesn't like it when I start the dishes, he'll start, start pulling me even if it didn't need my attention before. And so just sort of redirecting their attention to something else because it's so easy to distract them with, you know, some other things. So just toys and, you know, things that just um, keep keeps them, them active and busy, busy. yes. Now, Aline, um, as we, we round up this segment, uh, what would you say is your, let's say, three pointers to remember at all times as a mom to multiples? <laughs> um, yeah, just routine consistency, I would say, mm. and just, like, forgiving yourself, like, not be too hard on yourself. Yeah. Like, understand you, you can't give them the 100% attention that you maybe would have given one of them. Yeah. Yeah, and just, I think, try and enjoy it because it's a blessing. <laughs> Anything else, Rafila, you'd like to add from your experience? Um, I can say as much as twins are hectic, mm. but they're a true blessing. Mm. And I, I feel so blessed to have them. Mm. And I love the energy they bring in the house. They've got too much energy, so much joy. They're not as scary as they sound, but they are quite hectic. They're a handful, yeah. but I am blessed to have them. Oh, you make it sound so exciting. <laughs> Mr. Ofori, we need twins. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for coming in studio to talk about multiples. I think it's quite hectic just having one child. Now you've got to double the work, double everything. So thank you so much, Rafila, for sharing, and thank you so much to my experts for coming in and explaining. Now, that was a handful to deal with. We continue in the digital world with a discussion on multiples. So do find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. When we come back, we talk E. E is for epilepsy and our dishy daddy of the day. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Raising Babies 101 on Babies Health A to Z. We get a detailed background on E for epilepsy, taking a look at the risks and treatment. Epilepsy is a neurological disorder marked by sudden recurrent episodes of sensory disturbance, loss of consciousness or convulsions associated with abnormal electrical activity in the brain. Back with us is Dr. Sinabo Vilagazi. Thank you, a doctor. So, thank you, thank you. Talking epilepsy, let's define uh, what you can expect to see when someone's having an epileptic episode. Okay. Um, to summarize it in layman's terms, without having to go 
into the medical aspects of it. Basically, epilepsy is uh, electrical disturbances mm. within the brain. Just like you have a short circuit, mm. it's a similar um, thing within the brain as well. Mm. So that's how it manifests itself. Mm. And what to expect with epilepsy, okay? It's, it's actually an array of things, one. Um, from the jerking movements yes. that the child or person, um, old person will portray. And in actual fact, kids are much more prone to it, um, mm. especially if their temperatures are um, elevated above the normal temperature, which is 37 degrees. Um, so we call those um, febrile convulsions, mm -hmm. because now, because of the elevated heat in the brain as well, mm. um, those disturbances occur. So you'll see the child jerking or just staring to space. Mm. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's an array of things. And that does it you come with a foaming mouth? Um, in, in most instances, yes. Yes. And when those convulsions happen... Um, I've heard that you should put a spoon in the person's never, mouth. Never, ever, ever, ever introduce any foreign object to anyone, be it a child or an old person for uh. that matter, when they're having such. Yours is to turn that person on the left-hand side to make sure that should they vomit, they don't choke on their own vomit. Okay. And you allow for that to happen. But in the event that this is a prolonged um, yes. epileptic attack, um, which we call status epilepticus, um, it usually occurs for 30 minutes plus. Wow. So tell me, when these convulsions are happening, obviously, Rilera mm. Utlakor Hamutu is having an epileptic yeah. um, episode, yeah. but you are saying do not do that. We rang besides turning them on their side, because I've also heard a rumor, Hore, they can bite their tongue mm. off. Mm -hmm during the episode, mm -hmm. is this true? It, it, it can happen. I'm not sure about biting it off, but mm. it can happen. But one thing for sure is that you do not include, I mean, introduce any foreign objects um, mm. in the mouth of a person um, who, is, who doesn't have, um, we call it GCS, Glasgow mm. Coma Scale. So mm. it's how you measure the level of consciousness of mm. a person. So if they cannot open their mouth on their own, that is not for you. Okay. That is not for you. That is for uh, clinicians, doctors, whoever is treating a child or adult for that matter to sort of try and circumvent um, the said attack. So, Dr. Amplele, what are some of the things that are triggering an episode? Dearest young mothers out there, feed your children first and foremost. So in, and, and in most um, instances, um, when a child has low blood sugar, mm. it can actually trigger an epileptic fit. So, mothers, sky more wherever you go. Um, also, <laughs> <you're for one. laughs> but um, <laughs> the child ought to be fed because that's the baseline um, that we take okay. when we trying to decipher what is wrong with the child to ensure that the child is not hypoglycemic in that they've got low blood sugar. Uh -huh. Any other things that lights on? Head trauma um, is oh. also one of the greatest, greatest um, things that introduce um, epilepsy mm. in, in kids specifically. So when uh, your child falls down on the ground, you're a man or a man doesn't cry. Oh, yeah. But then remember with pediatric head trauma is that sometimes it is delayed because when you think the child is crying, but you're not understanding why the child is not stopping. So how do you stopping. know? I mean, when I was a wawa all mm. the time, so young this time, 20 years ago, when I got doctor in Gabo, when I left The minute your child cries um, in an unusual manner, one, you should be very worried. If your child uh, starts vomiting endlessly, uh -huh. then you should take your child to the nearest emergency room because that child needs to be seen um, by clinicians that work specifically with um, kids in that respect. It's something that needs to be taken quite seriously because mm. it can have long-term effects. And in the case of Uti, this epilepsy uh, does not subside and goes further on in life. One ought to be cognizant, Uti, it's not just about the patient mm. um, at that age, but the entire family as a whole, because that child is much more susceptible to um, 
getting depression because now they worried totally like I'm going to go out now and the next thing yeah. I'm going to start shaking whatever the case may be and people are going to start laughing at me. Mm -hmm. So support is, is of pinnacle importance in this regard. And similarly so, we ought to dispel specifically within the African culture that um, when you are having um, a seizure, yeah, but it's, 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 it's because uh, we are twice or whatever mm. the case may be, at that time, we've just got a genuine, genuine medical condition that needs to be addressed. So tell me, is epilepsy uh, hereditary? Uh, well, there's been research in that respect that if there's a history um, of epilepsy in your family, mm. uh, you, are, you do have um, about 30, 45%, I mean, I stand to be corrected, uh, chance of actually getting epilepsy, especially if it's an ongoing thing within the family. Okay. We have another question, Ndade. A friend of mine used to say, once they discover what mm -hmm. due to Leo epilepsy, mm -hmm. they puffed a smoke of cigar and then umundoko mm -hmm. right. Nakona, because you just said about foreign substances mm -hmm. and stuff. As far as I'm concerned, um, you need to be worked up. I mean, solely on the premise that you've been seen, Guti, you fell down and X, Y, and Z happened during that point in time. Mm. So they need to work you up on that. Mm. Not on the premise, Guti, now we lay uh guy or whatever the case may be. Yeah. I mean, I don't understand <laughs> the, the rationale behind that. <laughs> but, <yeah. laughs> I don't from our studio audience. Hi. Hi. Yes, <laughs> I wanted to ask, uh, can you die through the attack? One word. Yes, you can. Okay. You can, especially from status um, epilepticus, which is an ongoing thing. So not only will it affect um, your neurological status, but then as soon as that happens, all other systems, they will follow in suit. Uh, the second one, is it... Uh, a curable or can it be controlled? Now, on the respect of managing it, yes, um, we manage it. Um, there's appropriate medication and different um, doses, I mean, depending on how severe your case is. But then also the onus is on you as a patient to be very, very compliant with medication because when your clinician says do X, Y, and Z, do it to the latter, and don't, don't deviate, mm. because they know what they're talking about. Okay. Yeah. So, Doctor, as we wrap up, we have a lot of people who are in a responsible manner. We have a lot in a responsible manner. We have a lot of people who are in a responsible manner. We have a lot of people who are in a What would you say to the guidelines for what we have to It is also important for the mother to tell the close friends, Uti, should this happen, this is what you need to do. One, call me, open airway, um, don't put anything in the mouth. And if it's a baby, undress your child, cool, cool down the child if they are paroxysmal. That is very, very, very important. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Vilagazi. I've totally learned a lot about epilepsy. Nekisa Itzukhor Hamutu is having a fit. Oscar Tsenya, any objects, none of the spoon, but it's an absolute. No, no. Let's have the Just make sure you are not going to be able to do Thank you very much, Dr. Vinagazi, for all your insight. When we come back, if you love music, then you'll be enjoying this dishy daddy. MT dishes all on being a daddy with a busy music schedule. That's all next. Welcome back to Raising Babies 101. Raising a family and being a celebrity is not always easy. Joining us in studio to tell us how he copes is MT. <laughs> welcome, MT. Thank you for having me. A big welcome to little Avery. Yeah. Hi, Avery. <laughs> yeah. Well, MT, it must be tough. I mean, you're a rapper, and I know that's yeah. hard work. And yeah. then you've got this beautiful baby boy. How do you do both, being a great dad and also doing good at your career? I thought I would fail in life and just, you know, uh, my music wouldn't work, you know. But after he was born, I was pushed, you know, to to work harder, you know, and make sure that I, I actually get to do this thing the best way, you know. And, 
Yeah, man, since he's been in my life, I've been winning ever since, you know, so uh -huh. it's been kind of a blessing more than, you know, uh, a disadvantage for me. So I, I, I cherish that and, you know, embrace it with both hands, man. I, I know he's very special to you because I know your previous album, you yeah. named Avery after him. Yes, man. Uh, what was the inspiration behind that? You know, it was my first album ever, uh, and my first child ever. You know, and so it just made sense. Yeah, you know, so it, it just made sense because even prior to me having released the album, I, I hadn't done any album. It was just mixtapes, EPs, and mm. covers and mm. singles. So uh, my first child, first uh, album, you know, first album, and they both did well. I mean, look at my son. He's special. Oh, he's adorable. You know he's adorable. Yeah, and the album did extremely well. I know that you are co-parenting with the mom of the baby. How's that been uh, with co-parenting and, you know, sharing time with both of you? Um, you know, it's, it's not easy, but, you know, there's a level of understanding, mm. you know. Um, uh, his mom sort of now understands, you know, that I'm constantly busy, you know, so... Whatever little time that I have, you know, to spend with him and his mom, you know, I, I make sure I spend a day or two, you know, mm. with them. Mm. And it, it's, it's been working out, man. And shout out to his mom, you know, yeah. So I saw you on a helicopter and spinning the helicopter. What yeah. are some of the things to do at little Avery? We do a lot together. Surprisingly, he likes, he likes, he likes going with me wherever. Mm. Like, it Even on matter. stage, it doesn't matter where I'm <laughs> going. But I've n I've never really taken him to a show. Oh, okay. You know? But I've I've taken him to like studio sessions, like you know, um, TV shows, something that's more intimate, you know. Okay. Uh, rather than shows where it's noisy and there's yes, a whole of lot course, of people. He's still young. Yeah. So he comes with me, and he gels, man. He he just fits right in into whatever I'm doing, you know. And yeah, he j he. He is a big, you know, um, fan of my music as well. Yeah. So he knows all of my songs. Yes. You know, oh, so that is so cute. Yeah. So if, if I asked him now, he could give yeah. me some lyrics to roll up. You know? yeah. <laughs> okay. Now I must say, Khutisa <laughs> every on the show and Khuban Sabopa Balibo Date Kohai, that you are a present father is quite a big statement. Ewe Yetang by being on the show. Mm -hmm. What do you want to say to other men? Who are a little bit nervous or are scared to be hands on advice? Hey, it's it's not easy, man. You know, but it, if if you if you love your child, you know, and and you want the best for them, then that's what you're gonna do, man. You're gonna you know do the best that you can, you know. And I know it's especially for young fathers like myself, they struggle a lot with um, being accepted by the family. And, you know, a lot of young fathers like myself tend to run away, disappear. That's what it is, And, and stuff like that, you know. So that, that is not uh, the solution at all, you know, because one day your child is going to grow up and you find out that you just took off on, you know, and that's discouraging, you know. That has never happened to me. I had both my parents, you know, so I wouldn't want him to go through that, you know. So, yeah, man. All right. Let's get a question from our studio audience. What is your question, ma'am? Hello, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm good, thanks. Yeah. Oh, my name is Kifilwe. Actually, it's not a question. Uh, it's a comment. I just want to say to you, big up for being such a proud dad. Thank you. And it's very rare in this time and age to get proud dads out there, especially in our age group, yeah. get what I'm saying? Yeah. Just want to say big up. Thank you so much. Sadly, most of the time, you only get to realize the gift when it's present, mm. you know? Um, while, he, while, while, while he was on the way, I was also nervous, you know? Like not knowing, um, am I gonna, you know, be consistent? Am I gonna provide, yes. you know? But his presence just pushed me, you know, and made me a better person, mm -hmm. you know? So his existence, was my 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 torch, you know, yeah. in my journey, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, man, it, that's just how it is, man. Love love the kids, man. They're the future, you know. They are. They are a yeah. torch, as you say. Avery, high five. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, MT, and wonderful Avery for coming Thank in studio so to chat to us. For
Thanks, we appreciate it. Also, a big thank you to all of my studio guests and my studio audience, and not forgetting you at home. Thank you for watching. Do join us again next week when we'll be looking at more things on Raising Babies 101. Till then, hare tlokomele bana barona. Kare bana barona, ki bokamoso barona. From me, Carol Afori, have a wonderful weekend. Until next week. Welcome to Pep Talk, the go-to place for moms and dads who need a tip or two for raising their children. Breastfeeding is best, but not always comfortable and convenient for moms. So, I've found some fantastic options that will help make the lives of breastfeeding moms much easier. When it comes to breastfeeding, convenience is top of the list for moms. Moms generally want to strike a balance between looking good and comfort. So, go for the following. Sports bras, camisoles, v-necked t-shirts, dark colors in case of a spill, and carry a small cotton blanket or a scarf to cover up. Always burp your baby after breastfeeding. Breastfeeding can be very hard for some moms, so here are a few tips to get you going. Number one, try out different feeding positions to find the perfect latch. The wrong latch can cause sore or cracked nipples. You can use some Cuddle Sun Petroleum Jelly if it does get to that. Two, find a peaceful and relaxing place to breastfeed. Sometimes that's all you need to get the milk flowing. Three, don't beat yourself up. Most mothers struggle at first. If you do struggle, find the help you need and know you are not alone. Catch us next time right here on Pep Talk, your helping hand in parenting. To stand a chance to win some exciting prizes, get onto our social media pages and enter our weekly competition. See you next time.